like freaking what are those even called? I don't know, big rocks. No, not rocks. Hey everybody, I'm Jammer, and today let's talk about ARMS. So that's the brand new IP game that they announced at the Nintendo Switch presentation, which believe it or not was like two months ago now, almost. Well, ish, maybe a month and a half. The fact that the Switch is coming out in two, like a week and a half, like blows my mind. Anyway, so basically rumors coming up to that presentation, they did say, some people were saying that, oh, Nintendo has some sort of brand new IP that they are planning on launching with the Switch, blah, blah, blah. And I mean, I was a little bit skeptical at first. I was like, I was like, okay, I don't know if that rumor is gonna be true, but it ended up being true, being what we know is now arms. One side note, I'd love to see them have a different name than just arms. I don't know. I think we can think of something a little more creative. But anyway, so basically, it's a motion-controlled boxing game. Which, at first, at first glance, you could think, oh, it's just really Wii Boxing again, or the Mii's, you know, Wii Sport Boxing. It's n it's not like something we haven't seen before. I mean, it's Punch Out or whatever. But really, if you take a closer look, it's actually a lot more complex than initially looks. And the people are making comparison, like the title of this video, could this new IP be as strong as Splatoon was and have the impact it does on each respective genre, like how Splatoon did for the shooting genre and this for, what, just the fighting genre? I mean, this is technically motion controlled, I don't know, boxing. But the thing is, what's also interesting is that there is an option to play button controls without the motion control punching. So initially in my previous video a while ago where I had my first impressions on this game, I was like, okay, a lot, in games especially like this where you need to move with your motion control, you have to lean back and forth and punch. Sometimes it doesn't sync up very well. Sometimes you'll try to do a certain punch and it won't register correctly. And then of course there's the other problem where if you just mad punch like crazy, it won't respond like that onto the game because you know you can't actually do that in the game. So it's like, it, you have to strike a fine balance when it comes to that specific type of motion controls to make sure you're conscious that you're not hitting too quickly so the game can register every punch and make sure you're very subtle with your movement so then you don't overdo it or underdo, you know, whatever. And that's kind of like something I don't want to ha be worried about while I'm playing this game. I just want to enjoy it and have fun with it. Then of course on Splatoon side, the motion controls are nowhere near hindering the experience. Actually, I, I really enjoyed them and a lot of people do where it's just an aim assist essentially. And I think it works really well there. This game has a much bigger emphasis on the motion control, so there's the kind of split and divide between the two that I can see there. But again, like I had mentioned just previously, that this ARMS has the option to play with button controls. Now the developers in an interview or whatever ended up or did state saying that uh, you'll have more options available to you while if you're playing with motion controls rather than the button controls. Button controls are there for players who want to use that. Granted, we've never seen the option, or we've never seen any gameplay of the button control pretend. Perhaps you can't curve, perhaps you can't curve your punches kind of like you do with the motion controls because if you punch and then turn the Joy-Con a specific direction, your arm will twist that way. Perhaps there's no way to emulate that through button controls, and if so, then really, you really need to be playing motion controls if you want, because they do say that, like, you know, if you're going to be pro, you need to be using the most controls. And maybe that's the case. Maybe that's really what's going to be. But I feel like they, that's a big enough concept in with our... That's a big enough, like, in concept, I guess, in the game that they really can't just omit it entirely for button-controlled players, whatever. So in the theory that this game ever becomes tournament-worthy or actually catches on, it's really going to be more lenient on players using the most controls rather than the buttons. And I think that's really what comes down to whether this game is going to be as successful as... I mean, to go off on a quick tangent here, the characters themselves, the designs are so playful, so fun. I'm totally interested in, like, what this world is and, like, explanations of why this fighting arena happens, why people have these, you know, disconnecting arms, like, you know, explain the world and these characters and their stories and stuff like that. I'd love to see some sort of single-player aspect where it's, like, either mission-based with a specific character as they go up the ranks as a boxing champion or whatever. And, you know, stuff like that. I would love... I, I'm sure that's going to be incorporated as well as a great multiplayer, because that's really all we know so far is a multiplayer experience. I would love to see single-player stuff incorporated as well to really build on and expand upon that world, because that's part of the reason why Splatoon caught on as well. I mean, there was an amazing multiplayer, which this game looks like it'll probably have, but Splatoon was backed up with the sunken scrolls and all the lore there. Uh, the Octillion are Octillery... Oh, no, that's not right. Octillion? Octolings? There it is. Something Octolings... The Octoling Army... And um, Lord Octavius, there it is. Um, DJ Octavius, something like that. But regardless, there there's a ton of huge, there's a huge cast of characters like you know, Callie, Marie, the shop people, uh, whatever his old guy's name is. Oh, 
Captain Cuttlefish. You know, there was a bunch of recognizable characters that we would love that were outside of the multiplayer experience. And that, that thus, and having that enhanced the overall gameplay itself. So I feel like for ARMS anyways, they need to do something similar where it looks so far like they have a pretty good multiplayer experience. It's just to incorporate the other aspects to really enhance the rest of that experience. I mean, for example, there at least seems to be a lot more strategy in the gameplay rather than just swinging obliviously. I mean, for example, you can customize both of your hands and neither of which are locked to a specific fighter. So, for example, the mummy guy can't only have those giant, uh, like, freaking, what are those even called? I don't know, big rocks? No, not rocks. Like he can't, like the mummy guy can't have those big water mine things looking on his fist at all times, you know. And uh, the ninja guy can't, always, doesn't always have to have the whatever spinny ones he has in the trailers or whatever. So it's unique that you can customize both of your arms to have, let's say, one a no regular fist and the other one the flame fist or the boomerang. Or, you know, there's plenty, it, there's a ton of options to play with and it, I think it's going to add a lot of depth to the overall combat. One of my favorites personally is the... Uh, is this boomerang? I think you punch it, like, comes around and swings it from the back. It can go, like, around that pillar in that one arena. The other ones is, like, the flaming mitt thing. You can just, like, slap them. It's freaking hilarious looking. So I feel like if balanced correctly, which I'm assuming they will be, um, it'll be really unique seeing what character, uh, which characters and, of course, which, uh, fists, I guess, are going to be the most viable or the most... Not OP, but you know, the most viable and the ones that are, you know, more used. And I wonder if the characters themselves actually would matter and have certain specific stats to them. Because what it looks like to me so far is that it's all really based on what fist you're equipped with. The character doesn't matter as much, but I'm sure once we get the game, maybe let's say Spring Girl has a higher jump, while Jump Boy or Spring, you know, Ribbon Girl has like, you know, is quicker, but maybe has like lower defenses or something or can get knocked down easier. Well, Spring Boy is more average. Mummy, he can just take lighter hits and just go right through and keep punching. I'm sure there's going to be some sort of aspect like that to incorporate into these characters. Add even more depth to this gameplay. So that's the biggest thing. Are these motion controls? Because what it looks like is that they are heavily emphasized. And if you're going to be a hardcore player or a good player for that matter, you're going to need to be playing with motion controls. So when it comes to the idea of will it be like the next Splatoon, this is what I think. If they really nail these motion controls, they feel good. There's no like weird unsinking thing. Like, it feels natural to like hit and swing and turn the Joy-Cons and everything like that. I think that would be a giant benefit for that game. But there still will always be players that are against motion controls no matter what. I mean, even in Splatoon where it has such a minor motion control aspect, which I personally think enhances the gameplay. A lot of people are convinced that they will only play without that turned off and they use, you know, the, just the sticks. Which is fine. No judgment, of course. And then I guess there is to argue that the motion controls enhance Splatoon to make better players where you can get more precise shots. But that's just a matter of perspective. Perhaps these button controls for arms are still going to be viable enough to play with. It's really kind of a wait and see thing to how this game is going to feel in the hands of players. I think it's going to do pretty well. I think it's going to, I mean, it's supposed to come out, what, in the, within the first few months of the Switch. So it's another game to play. I, I, I can't wait to play it, actually. It looks, I think it looks a lot of fun. It was one of my favorite things of that whole presentation. But whether it's going to catch on as much as Splatoon did, granted, I mean, no one even expected Splatoon to catch on as much as it did. I mean, there was a lot of rumblings right before it uh, released, but once it was out, oh my gosh. I mean, yes, it left a huge impact at the E3 that it showed up at. Even after that, no one would have expected for it to sell as much as it did, especially on the Wii U, you know? And now it's the Switch itself is going to be launching with a sequel to Splatoon, ju thus proving the importance and the... I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Thus even proving how important that brand is now to Nintendo. Now, can ARMS be like Splatoon or even better? I don't think it'll be better than Splatoon. It definitely won't be on par either, I don't think. I mean, who knows? It could be... Of what the fighting community has always wanted for some reason. <laughs> I mean, Pokémon made a big impact, but not not nearly as big as Splatoon did. Granted, the difference was it was a Pokémon game versus a brand new IP, so maybe that has something to do with it. Whether Arms will catch on, I think it will. I think it's going to sell pretty well. I don't think it's going to be an absolute failure or just some sort of uh, mini game thing that nobody really wants. The only reason I can see that ever happening is if the motion controls are really not that great, and the game is just multiplayer. There's no single player aspect there. The op there's just really local and online multiplayer, and then that's it. I feel then maybe I could see it underselling what it potentially could be, but will it be levels of Splatoon success? I think we'll have to wait and see. I hope so. I love these characters. 
I'd love someday to see Spring Boy in Smash Bros. I know there are many other characters well deserving of that spot before them, but I think he would have a really unique moveset with like stretchy arms, like his long tether grabs. I think it'd be interesting, I don't know. Anyways, let me know in the comments what do you guys think of ARMS, this brand new IP. Do you think that it could be as successful as Splatoon, under, or even more successful? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to give this video a big awesome And if you haven't already, subscribe for tons on ARMS, Nintendo Switch, you know, Breath of the Wild, because that's coming out, what, in the next week and a half or so. So much coverage coming up. Thank you again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.